Welcome to uh, Citizens Corner number one, where I go over some of your comments and try to answer some of the questions that come up. And let me go ahead and start by apologizing in advance in case I managed to mispronounce anyone's name. Not intentional, but uh, I'm very skilled at messing up people's names. So let's jump right in with the first comment by Mark Sarnecki uh, from the video Our Bad Combat Mechanics Killing Star Citizen. Uh, he says, uh, you have made some good comment points about gunnery. I uh, appreciate it, actually. Uh, we've done a lot of research on it. Uh, one of the big contributors is Alien War. He's very, very smart about these subjects, dealing with how everything is interacting with one another and uh, looking at other games, and, uh, the similar, similar genre, and seeing what they've done to actually create balance to between not only uh, uh, how ships fly, but also uh, control input, such devices, choices such as joysticks or mice and things like that, and how they've come up with solutions that actually not only balance the inputs themselves, but uh, but also how the whole gameplay works. All right, we have another one from Auto Ecstasy uh, from the Witch Ship, the Polaris, the Idris, and the Javelin. He says, buying the Polaris on your phone or at work, hilarious. My two cents about these ships. Anything that can catch the Polaris can't kill it. The Idris and Javelin will must outbrawl anything that engages them because they won't be outrunning anything, which means Polaris has more options. Really comes back to desire gameplay. Defang Battleship Brawler versus Quaint Carrier versus High Speed Nuker. I personally own a Polaris, so I made my choice. Cheers. Yeah, I kind of agree. For me, the, the, what I like about the Polaris is the ability, especially when it comes to engaging other capital ships, to get away from them. Uh, you could make some very nice stealth strikes if you have a scouter, and you can get out of there if they want to pursue you. Uh, and what you're going to have to deal with, if anything, is their fighters, and the ship seems to be more than capable of dealing with that. So, yeah, I think the Polaris is in a very sweet spot. All right, and of course, we had a various responses about the way we felt about the Defender. Of course, the day after uh, I recorded the video about the Defender and the flaws therein, uh, they had a community video, a community town corner, whatever, a video about the uh, Defender itself addressing a lot of the flaws, and I guess... It's funny, it seems like they said that, oh, yeah, now you can do all of it fixed. You don't have to just do all gimbaled, uh, even though that's what they wrote in the manual. I think it was a more of a, um, oh, crap, we messed up. The community's not happy with this kind of thing. So they just kind of slapped, like, oh, yeah, well, no, no, don't worry. We'll, we'll change it, we'll change it, we'll change it. Uh, so let's start with uh, Neo Onyx from the Banner Defender is Badly Flawed. Uh, I think CIG released the ship in spite of the design because they want a feedback that they're getting not like they are building this anytime soon instead they got community to do the job for them kind of like q a is done uh, so cig gets the initial sales at the lowest price point the community gets feedback and design commentary cig fixes the problems and gets to increase the ship cost because it's not a concept anymore the ship is released with feedback implemented and resold for a higher price tag later on in the end cig may be using the best tool uh, to its advantage us I can understand that point of view. To me, though, I think they've kind of marred the ship. I mean, first impressions, right? There was a lot of things about the ship that should have been addressed before it was put out. Um, to me, it seems a lot of the responses from CIG felt more like a cleanup crew kind of coming in and, and realizing that certain mistakes were made. And some of these issues wouldn't be issues if they had unified systems in the game. Uh, especially when it came to the gimbaled weapons, the ability for anyone else other than mouse interactive mode to use gimbals effectively. So, you know, mouse relative, gamepad, joystick, uh, that was a big issue uh, because they were basically stuck having a ship they couldn't utilize pretty much at its fullest extent. Yeah, they could lock the gimbals, but then you're out, you know, damaged quite a bit. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, we're dealing with the issue of visibility. The visibility on the ship was just horrendous. I mean, I've heard people complain about visibility before, and a lot of times just because there's there's some bars there. And having flown a lot of World War II flight games, I don't see uh, bars on the cockpit as being a real issue because I'm used to that kind of thing. But this, this was blatant to me. This was just like the arms extending way past even the middle of your of where your, where your targeting reticule was, just by default. And that's bad. That's terrible. That's... It's like someone holding their hand in front of your face. It's just one of the worst visibilities I've ever seen. So yeah, I'm sure they'll address it, but it should have been apparent that that ship needed more time. And uh, 
that was probably the, one of the worst releases they've ever had. And and bearing in mind that that that, that we've seen situations like with the Vanguard, where the ship doesn't come out anything remotely close to it, I see this ship obviously following that pattern as well, but maybe even to a greater extent. I mean, we don't know what we're gonna get what we're gonna get now because this ship needs so much rework. Not sure says my biggest issue is the weak hull. Everyone uses ballistics. Yeah, I agree. Uh, when they said that advertise on the ship that it's got a very weak hull but strong shields, my issue is okay, so it's a dead ship. I don't like the concept of ballistic penetration in the game. See, from my point of view, and this is just my point of view, if shields were, were to be developed, the reason they would first be developed is a defense against micrometeorites as a ship travels through space. It would be uh, much like the way that Star Trek, they have deflectors in front of their ships, and that's to push away small debris. So, shields, in my opinion, would be strongest against physical, weakest against energy, and hull, since it's made to deal with atmospheric reentry and the radiation of space, would be strongest against energy and uh, weakest against physical. So, to me, They've got it backwards. And the penetration thing, I think, is going to cause a lot of problems for ships that aren't covered in armor plates. So we'll have to see how that comes out. Of course, you know, we are an alpha. They could come back and revise lore. They could change things. This is one of the things I do hope they change because I think it creates a lot of issues for lightly armored ships like this because the Band Defender is going to be a big ship. And you can just come in with some mantises, some tarantulas, whatever, and mess it up royally. Charles Ballier, hope I pronounced that right, wrote, maybe it's just me, but those arms look like armored shields meant to deflect incoming fire away from the cockpit. But yeah, that's split fly and fire control, I'm not sure about that. Probably end up swapping for all fixed guns since your visibility is forward just like your firepower. It's actually more sensible to me to have the wings in front of your ships as additional armor without creating a larger silhouette than having them hang out the sides like targets to get shot off. If I were to change it, I'd have the twin cockpit to be over under with the gunner in the bottom and the pilot peaking just above giving a better situational awareness to the one driving without sacrificing the protection. Yeah, uh, the arms themselves, I they said that the basically what I'm understanding that the, the ship has uh, its shields didn't seem as impressive as, as I thought it would be. It would be nice if those arms were basically either physical armor or they held shield generators. Um, if the ship is supposed to be extremely lightly armored and it's supposed to have really powerful shields, I don't know. I, I really don't see much function for those arms. And I agree with you there. And a lot of times some of the best designs is based on the idea of form follows function. And a lot of times I feel that they design the form and then try to wrap a function around it. Uh, they do it backwards. And this is that's the nature of like, you know, when, when artists are driving uh, ship design and some of these ships, it's apparent. Some of the ships are, I think are very well built. Some of them, this one I have a lot of questions about. So as I said, it's not my favorite ship. It's not because I don't think it's aesthetically pleasing. I think it's very pretty. I think that I like the Banyu architecture. I just feel that it's lacking in the department of why is this way, the way it is. It just feels like let's just put this on here because it looks cool and it doesn't serve any purpose and it increases your profile it's going to increase your cross section on your scanning if it doesn't serve a purpose then and it only causes some negative things like that i i, I just I'm not, i can't really be for it honestly adolfo wilson says there is actually a video in the mags tv channel where he shows us the solution to this problem while also adding to the lore of the banner race in a drawing of the ship made by somebody he knows, not only to get the visibility, but would also make the ship more attractive by the concept. Yeah, you know, actually, that's pretty cool. Uh, I've seen already some videos on YouTube about people who actually have kind of bent and reformed the model and then shown overlays and things like that, what it would look like. The one thing that, that the Star Citizen community is full of is people with a lot of talent. And they're able to look at a situation and come back and give a better solution. I wish the devs in some regards were more responsive to that. And I understand that there are a lot of backers and there's a lot of comments, but you know, hopefully with Spectrum, uh, the upvotes for good ideas will push things to the forefront. 
and they'll start looking at looking at solutions to things like the ship design because you're right there are there are a lot of absolutely wonderful brilliant people in the community that come up with some amazing stuff and i really would like to see some of it integrated william w says oh i like lightning he cracks me up well thank you so there you go lightning someone said something nice about you <laughs> yeah actually we've been good friends for a long time uh we met playing uh, Star Trek Online, doing PvP together in the, the same fleet. And uh, we've been friends ever since. He's friends with my brother, my brother's wife. And uh, we're always on voice together pretty much every day. Most of the days, at least. And uh, yeah, I, I just he's just a really great friend to, to everybody I know. Minion Soldier says on the video The Long Game, The engine trails are very reminiscent of Homeworld. Absolutely, you know, we're having to mention that. You, I just that just clicked. You're absolutely right. I love Homeworld. the The whole Homeworld series, to me, was probably the best RTS series ever made. I even got the uh, the remakes on Steam, and I've got the ground one, but I haven't played that yet. But I love the lore, I love the mythology, I love the music. Uh, I love the the fact as an RTS, you can move your fleet and your ships not only you know across the map, you know, like uh, across the X and the Y axis. But you have Z-axis movement as well because they treat it like actual space. So you can move a fleet up and around, back behind an enemy. Uh, it, to me, it was it's it, the whole Homeworld series is the best RTS I've ever played. I've never been able to get into another RTS after it because I felt it always felt flat to me. But yeah, absolutely, uh, it does remind me of the engine trails in Homeworld. John Turpak, which ship RSI, Taurus, or Miss Max? He writes. A lot depends on how much effort they put into setting up how cargo works. In the real world, there are plenty of reasons why we haul freight and everything from minivans to semis. Based on my 19 years experience hauling freight in the real world, I'm going to go with the Max. It's more along the lines of an expediter than a route hauler. It's faster, more agile, more discreet, cheaper to run. Honestly, if you need the extra capacity of the Taurus, you're better off going with a hull B and paying for an escort. Even if it doesn't fit in small jump points, I'll, stay, I'll, I'll still take the Max over the Taurus. I can make a profit on runs that wouldn't even pay the Taurus to get out of the hangar. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's been a lot of debate. You know, the, the big thing that we don't know about the, about the Max, of course, is can't take small jump points. Um, they've always, Remember they're saying that the largest ship that's going to be able to take the small jump points is the Freelancer, but with the variants, particularly along the lines of the Max, we don't know much. We don't know anything in stone yet because we don't even have jump points in the game. I guess we're going to have to see how that comes out. But either way, yeah, I think the Max is one of those ships you can run it solo and really get everything out of it. Uh, obviously, you couldn't run the turret, but if they do the, the old automated systems or if you put an NPC in there, for the most part, you're covered. Uh, I love the Freelancer series. Some people don't like the design of it. I have no issues with it. I think it looks kind of cool. But, you know, I, the Beholder, and all that. But, yeah, I, I think for me... I'm glad to have it. And I'm glad that Lightning has the Taurus because then we can just pick what it is we're going to be running it that day. And then I have the Hall C if we need to step up to the next level. So we're covered. We're covered. Paul Manzella, the long game. I agree. It's the Idris. Idris sounds stupid. Well, I'm going to have to agree with you on that. I know it's just a potato potato thing. I know it's an American pronunciation versus a, a British or European uh, you know, pronunciation. But for us, saying Idris is a lot more natural than Idris. And for them, Idris is probably a lot more natural sounding than Idris. We'll just have to go ahead and do that different. But do so, 15, the long game. Why be Rambo when you can be Leroy Jenkins? I agree. I absolutely agree. <laughs> in fact, most of the times I charge in the battle, I see Leroy Jenkins. That's just, if Rambo comes in with at least a little bit of strategy and a lot of bravado, Leroy Jenkins just throws that to the wind and just goes for it. I am I am all pro Leroy Jenkins. Antares 3, from the video Cutlass Facelift. Currently, I feel all the ships are way too maneuverable. They accelerate too much in every direction, and they rotate too fast. Just watch the traffic around Port Olisar for a few minutes. Anything from 6 ton to 350 ton ships skipping around like insects. A lot of players use a digital input, keyboard or joystick button, for strafing, which makes ship movements on things like manual landings look completely retarded. I don't feel they have any mass at all. I hope they improve this a lot. I would agree with a lot of your sentiment there. 
Uh, they've done a better job in bringing some of the larger ships to have uh, more weight and mass. The problem is, though, is, okay, when 2.6 came out, uh, you probably noticed there was a difference between 2.6 to 2.6.1. Uh, they found when 2.6 uh, came out something that was apparent to me a long time ago because the nature of the interactive mode issue. Once the accelerations were, were lowered and people couldn't juke and dodge and you didn't have these instant accelerations, nobody could get out of the way of the instant pixel perfect targeting that IM presents for interactive mode users. People were just getting annihilated. There was nothing you could do. It was at that point we had a lot of people actually switch their point of view under, from when their understanding of how badly interactive mode is is, is messing with uh, the game. They kind of came over to our camp and went, okay, yeah, we agree. I, I can see the problem now. Um, so they had to go back in 2.6.1 and make everything snappy again. So people have just an ounce of a chance to not be hit 100% of the time. It's an issue, basically, where they've got a mechanic that they're wrapping the whole game around, and it's a mechanic only one mode and one controller can use, and it's an arcade mechanic. It's one pulled right out of Freelancer, which was promised specifically by Ben Lesnick to never be in the game. Nothing like Freelancer, sadly. No point and click. No click to kill. I think it's something like that. No point and click is, is the quote he gave. And it's made its way into the game. And that was 2014, I think June, when it came in. So we're almost three years into a mechanic that the game has been wrapped around that only one mode on one controller can use and even other modes on the same controller can't use. So yeah, that's a problem. And it's going to continue to be a problem until they, until they either address it, realize it, or just, just honestly destroy their own game with it. And that's the sad truth of it. It's it's funny, but a lot of people say, "Oh, it's it's it'll be fixed later." You know, whatever. The problem is, is that controls aren't a side thing. Controls and how you interface with the game is the core of the game. Look at games like Super Meat Boy. Not a graphically superior game. It's pretty basic. But nobody who's played Super Meat Boy can say, "Man, those controls suck." When Elite Dangerous was designing it, now once again, I'm not promoting Elite Dangerous as their flight model, but let's just look at how they approached it. They said, let's get our controls right first. So they let players fly around, and they tweaked it, and they tweaked it until it was the model that they wanted. And that once it felt it was the way they wanted, and it worked right, they said, okay, now we're moving forward. What CIG is doing is they're building a lot of ships. They've haphazardly thrown together a flight interface a uh, control schemes and then tried to balance everything around those without first just building solid control schemes it's like okay we've got something general here something general here and then we're gonna try to balance weapons and rotations everything around all these control schemes that they that what they really need to do is just stop and say let's just focus on controls for the next couple patches get people's input test things out Make sure everything's equally accessible like we promised and just then move forward. Eh, let's wait till after they get planets in the game. I think we're all waiting for that. But you know what I'm saying. I think there has to be a time. And then like they, they've commented that, oh yeah, controls are something you work right before the game's done. I'm like, no. No, 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 no. How you interface with the game is the most important part of a game. I have owned a plethora of games that were beautiful or had great potential that I never played again because the controls blew ass. Controls, they make or break you every time. You can have an ugly looking game that can be fantastic and you can have a great looking game that's terrible. And it'll all come down to controls. And you'll never find a game that controls badly being marked as a great game. Isn't going to happen. All right, so we have the Christopher from the Banu Defender is Badly Flawed. So flying a Banu ship into Vandal space sounds like a great way to conduct surveillance. You know, you're right. No, I agree. Uh, you know, if those of you out there who own a, a Banu Merchantman um, or Banu Defender, you you might be very right. I think that that is a, if they won't fire on your default. Now, I don't know with the technology of the game if they're going to be able to like scan for life forms. Oh, there's a human on board. If they can't do that, if they have to get close for a visual inspection, yeah, you might be okay. They might just say, 
oh, here's a merchant man and a couple uh, defender escorts. You know, they're not going to bother you. And then you can get your readings and your scans. You probably want to do it passively, though, because active scans might catch their attention. But yeah, I agree. I think that's a, I think that's a, a real potential there for sneaking into the Vanduul territory. All right, so we have Nazar Horball. This channel can make a single video without complaining about the IM <laughs> interactive mode. Every single ship can be customized for IM setup. <laughs> yeah, but you kind of have it backwards on that to some degree. Yes, first of all, yes, we do talk about IM a lot because it's a terrible decision and uh, it's a terrible interface when you can only have one method on one controller and it can't even be balanced with the other methods on the same controller. It's a bad interface. Um, yes, it can be set up on, on every ship. That's not the issue. Uh, the issue is, and I've done a video on it already, uh, how the other ship, how the other controls interact with it. They can't utilize it to the same extent. And some ships have gimbal only weapons. For example, like the Freelancer uh, on the side, uh, the guns on the side of the cockpit. They, I can, I can't swap them out for larger fixed guns. I either have to lock the gimbals, or try to use the stick with the gimbals, but. It's in a way you don't get the full utilization of the ship if you're using stick, and that's a real issue. Uh, nine of my 22 ships have forced gimbals on them. That's 40 something percent of my ships. Uh, I can't utilize the full extent using the control that I want to use in a game that was promised to be controller agnostic. So, yes, we do bring it up, and it will continue to be brought up either until it's fixed or until the game reviews come out with the resounding thud of a thousand hand slaps to the forehead. We'll see what happens first. All right, guys. Well, I think that's our first Q&A here. Uh, I hope it wasn't too embarrassing or too horrible. And uh, as always, I'm going to try to go ahead and keep track of the questions on a spreadsheet. Uh, some are repeats and whatnot, so I kind of just picked one or two people that had uh, asked a question within, that, within those boundaries and just used that. Hopefully, if your question wasn't heard on here, you heard something similar uh, there's a lot of uh, things with YouTube right now. It's hard to keep track of all the comments, the way they've been changing things. So do my best. But anyway, we'll catch you next time for Citizens Corner number two. <laughs> Have a good one.